you made the big decision to get a new dog or puppy but you're not sure what the right breed for you is? Well, in this video we're going to take a look at two medium sized breeds who could become your perfect canine companion. Welcome back to the Fenrir Chow Chow Show. If this is your first time here, my name is Franny and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. Everything we do here is dedicated to helping you find the perfect breed for you and then helping you become a high level canine leader who can raise the perfect canine companion. If that sounds like you then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to make sure you never miss another episode of the Fenrir Chow Chow Show. So let's dive into today's video where we'll be comparing these two beautiful breeds. Let's start by taking a brief look at the history of the Chow Chow. Their ancestors originated from northern China and Mongolia. They were first recognised by the UK Kennel Club in 1894 and the American Kennel Club in 1903. They are one of the oldest recognised breeds in the world. However, their history dates back even further than this, with artefacts of China's Han Dynasty first depicting them as far back as 206 BC. It is believed that they originated 1,000 years before this date in Arctic Asia, before they migrated to China via Mongolia and Siberia. With their appearance resembling a small lion, they became incredibly popular amongst Chinese nobility. One Chinese emperor was so enamoured with them that he owned over two and a half thousand that he used as hunting dogs. The name Chow Chow is believed to have come from the Chinese slang word Chow. Chow means edible and unfortunately the Chow Chow has been considered a delicacy in areas of China. They have had many more function uses over the years including herding and guarding livestock as well as guarding properties. Now let's briefly touch upon the extensive history of the Boxer. The Boxer dates back over 4,000 years with their ancestors being tracked back to 2500 BC where they were used as war dogs. However, they didn't quite resemble the boxer we know and love today. The boxer of modern times comes from the Molosser and Mastiff family and are classed as working dogs. Their appearance as we know it today comes from Germany. Boxers have been bred down from a larger German breed called the Bullenbeiser, which translate to bull biter. These Bullenbeisers were used by the nobles in medieval times to hunt down large game. As time went on, the Bullenbeisers were bred with smaller Mastiff type breeds. They were given the name Boxer because of the way they play and fight using their front paws, which resembles fighters in the ring. Boxers have been used in a variety of working roles in their history, including war dogs, police dogs, cattle dogs, protection dogs, watch dogs, and even guide dogs. They have been a popular choice of breed throughout history and continue to be voted one of America's top 10 breeds. The Chow Chow is famous for their teddy bear-like appearance. This medium-sized breed stands up to the height of 20 inches at the withers and can weigh up to 80 pounds. Females will grow to a smaller height but typically weigh a little less. As well as their big fluffy coat, the Chow Chow's other defining feature is their tongue. They are one of only a few dog breeds to have a bluish black tongue. This unique tongue sits inside a small yet broad skull. One interesting fact about their skull is that it is home to a set of 44 teeth. This is noteworthy as most dogs only have 42. They have small triangular ears that sit erect on their head. They should look strong and muscular and have strong legs. As well as being likened to a teddy bear, they also have been described as lion-like in their appearance. This is due to the large amount of hair around their necks that resembles the mane of a lion. Their coat comes in a variety of colours including red, black, cream, shaded red, blue, white and fawn. Chow Chows have a dense double coat that needs to be brushed at least three times a week in order to help keep it clean and tangle free. Boxers are one of the most instantly recognised short haired breeds. Boxers used to be known for having dock tails and ears but this practice has been banned in many countries now. The two most common colours of boxer are fawn and brindle. Usually both of these colours also have flashes of white across the boxer's feet, undercarriage, neck and face. You may still find a boxer in a different colour but they are much less common, less recognised colours including the reverse brindle which is fawn stripes on a black body and completely white boxers which are not recognised in the UK Kennel Club or American Kennel Club. Did you know that boxers do not carry the black gene so you will never see a fully black boxer? Boxers are very muscular and lean dogs. Males usually weigh up to 80 pounds and grow to around 25 inches at the withers and females weigh slightly less at 65 pounds and grow to a similar height. 
They must be kept active to keep their fit physique and muscled body. Hey guys, really quick message. I just wanted to let you know, if you're struggling with any kind of behavior with your dog, I have a completely free course called The Principles of Canine Behavior, where I boil down all of my experience, skill set, and knowledge as a canine behaviorist and some of the most important things that you need to know. Again, it is completely free. There'll be a link in the description box below if you are interested. And if you are, I can't wait to speak to you over there as well. The Chow Chow has been described as being feline in nature as they often prefer to do only what suits them. They really are not too fussed about pleasing their owners and can be quite selfish. This breed is very intelligent but they are very difficult to train. A positive approach is required when training with consistency and plenty of treats, rewards and praise. They are however known as a relatively clean breed and are quick to learn toilet training. Their intelligent nature needs to be tested and they need to be kept mentally stimulated. A bored chow chow can become quite destructive and this can show itself in behaviours like barking, chewing and digging. You can keep them mentally stimulated with a range of dog toys like Kongs, snuffle mats and puzzle toys. These toys should prevent negative behaviour. They are a moderately active breed and prefer to have a medium sized walk of around 30 minutes each day, but they will join you on longer walks or hikes if desired. Boxers are known for their well-balanced, all-rounded temperament. They are a very playful, friendly and energetic breed. It is best to take your boxer out for a walk for between 30 to 45 minutes a day. On very hot and cold days, they should be taken out for shorter walks. Boxers also require the chance to be able to run around two to three times a week. This can be done in a fenced backyard or if your boxer has good recall in a field whilst out on a walk. Boxers are very loyal to their owners and family, but will defend their homes instinctively from intruders when they feel the need to. This is because they were bred to be protection dogs in previous years. Boxers can become bored very quickly, which can lead to undesired behaviours such as chewing, licking and digging things that they shouldn't. So plenty of problem solving puzzles and toys are a good investment with this breed. Boxers respond best when training with positive reinforcement techniques. They also respond well to clicker training and plenty of treats. They are relatively easy to train and they adapt well to both large houses, apartment living and are easy to groom. Socialisation is important with all breeds but it's especially important with the Chow Chow. They have a naturally high prey drive due to their background as hunting dogs and this can lead to aggression with smaller animals or pets. They are also known to be unsure around other breeds of dogs of the same sex. This isn't to be said that you could not own another dog or pet. From puppyhood you should get them used to as many different situations as possible, introducing them to the sights, sounds and smells of the world around them. Even with excellent socialisation, it would be advised to never leave them alone with another animal for a long period of time. Chow Chows are naturally protective breeds that will attach themselves to their families and protect them should they feel the need to do so. They are better suited to families with older children, so if you have small children, do not leave them at home with your chow chow alone. Boxers are usually good with children as they are patient and gentle. They also recognise the need to be gentle with smaller dogs and puppies too. With lots of socialisation from puppyhood, they have no issues being raised alongside other pets and they are usually not an aggressive breed. They can, however, struggle with slightly bigger dogs than themselves, especially ones of the same sex. It's important to try and introduce them to bigger dogs as much as possible whilst they're still puppies to prevent them from having issues in the future. The Chow Chow and the Boxer are two similar sized dogs with very striking differences in their appearance. The Boxer is arguably the better choice of breed for families with younger children, but both have an instinctive nature to protect. The Boxer is better suited to more active families and the Chow Chow to those who want a more relaxed exercise regime. Whichever breed fits around your needs and lifestyle will become a fantastic canine companion for you and your family. I hope you enjoyed today's video, if so please make sure you hit that like button, get involved in the comment section down below and don't forget, if you are new here make sure you subscribe as we have two dedicated Chow Chow videos coming here every week. So I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Femria Chow Chow Show.